Good day. This is Teresa Federicks from Growing Businesses Using Projects with yet another video, this time on MS Project. We're going to be looking at work duration units. Fixed work, fixed units, fixed duration. We're going to look at the impact of these types on cost and we're going to look at issues and fixes. My intent with this and every video is to ensure that the ordinary person can understand what is being taught and apply it. Our agenda, understanding work duration units, formulas for the calculation of work duration and units, understanding fixed work, fixed duration, and fixed units, and using fixed work, fixed duration, and fixed units in MS project, the differences. So let us look a little closer at these three ways. The first is duration. What is duration? is the number of business days it will take to complete a task. So that if duration is two days and you start on Monday, it will finish on Tuesday. But if you start on Friday, it will finish on the following Monday because it is really dealing with the business days, the working days. So let's look at work effort. Is the person units, person hours, days, weeks, or months given to a task. So the task is two days, but you have three people working on it. Each person will work eight hours each day so that you're going to have business days. Each day is eight hours, so you're six, eight, or 48. Think of the work effort as your pay sheet. You are going to have to pay for 48 hours of work. And the last one is units. Units is the total available time resource gives to a task and is measured in percentage. Remember when we fill out our resource sheet, we put some people at 100%, which means they were working 8 hours. Some people at 50%, which means they were available to the project for, for half of that time, which is 4 hours. So, so this is what you have to be balancing as you delve into allocation of resources. So let's look at limitations on scheduling. Producing a working schedule has to be done given resources and particularities about specific types of tasks. Resource limitations include number of units, skill level of the units, availability of units. You may want somebody on the, on the project 100% of the time and you do not get that. You get probably 50%. Law of diminishing returns after time. You, you add and add more resources and you get less and less production. Requirements for the task, there may be urgency or priority. Requirements for on-site work, dependency, internal and external relationships, and constraints and deadlines. The task has to be done by a specific time. There are three key formulas you have to learn when you're using MS Project. The first is work. Project calculates work by using this formula. Work is equal to duration by assignment units. So that if your duration is one day and you have one person assigned 100% of the time, your work is going to be eight hours because 100% of the time is normally an eight hour day. So it's going to be one by eight. What about units? So units is equal to number of resources by percentage of time. So if you had one resource and they are allocated to the task 100% of the time, your units is 100%. What about duration? Duration is work divided by units. If your work is 8 hours and your unit is 100%, of which it means it's one person working full time, the duration is going to be one day. So what is fixed duration? Fixed duration in the formula duration by units equal work duration is fixed. What does that mean? It does not decrease with adding human resources. There are instances when that is relevant. For example, nature of the task meetings, airplane journey. It doesn't matter how many people on the plane, the duration is the same. Deadline may be the primary driver. External resources when workload is not PM's problem. Duration is the first thing you, you, can, you should estimate. In these instances, we are saying fixed work. The work remains constant. When you create a fixed work task, you set the duration of the task and project assign a percentage of effort that is sufficient to complete the task in the time that is allotted for each resource that you assign to the task. 
So you so normally estimate work first and then you assign resources. When we go on to project, I'll show you how. So, um, for instance, we have two painters assigned full time to paint the walls in two days. Work equals 32 hours, 16 hours per painter. If you increase the duration of the task from two days to four days, project sets each painter assignment units of 50%, so that each painter works only half time and the work remains constant at 32 hours because we have decided that work is fixed. So let's discuss fixed units. This is a task in which the assigned units or resources is a fixed value and any changes to the amount of work or the task duration do not affect the task units. On fixed unit tasks, units will be fixed. If you change the work, duration will be changed. For example, specialized jobs like pressure vessel welding, lab analysis, prepare legal documents with limited training resources. For example, you assign one painter full time to paint walls in four days. As the duration, the work, the time it will take the painter to complete the task at 100% effort is 32 hours or 4 days, 8 by 4. If you increase the amount of work to 40 hours, project recalculates the duration as 5 days. Now the painter has an extra day of, of work on the task at 100% effort. So let's look at it a little further. The order of your actions matter when effort-driven scheduling is enabled. If you initially assign two resources to a task with a duration of three days, which is equal to 24 hours, projects schedule each resource to work 24 hours for a total of 48 hours. You might initially assign one resource to a task with a duration of 24 hours and later add a second resource. In this case, effort-driven scheduling will cause projects to schedule each resource to work 12 hours in parallel, keeping the total of 24 hours of work on the task. All in one, project is going to think that you are adding resources to affect reductions and it's going to reduce it. There are some general principles you should pay attention to. If you hold one of work, duration or units as fixed, and you change any of the other variables, then project would recalculate the last variable. Therefore, if you fix the units and change duration, project will automatically adjust work. If you fix the duration and change the work, project would automatically adjust the units. If you fix the work and change the units, project would automatically change duration. So therefore, you select fixed units if there are constraints on the resources availability or limitations to the resources available to do the task. You select fixed work if the task is driven by the amount of work. This is always effort driven. For example, one person builds this step in two days, two persons will build it in one day. You select fixed duration where duration is not affected by the addition or removal of resources, for example, travel. One can look at critical tasks on the critical part and select this task type so as to not extend the schedule, but in this case, other factors have to be favorable. Now, we are going to look at the impact of adding resources on task types. So I've brought in the column type, the column work, and the column cost. And I've exposed the resource names so that you can see across the board what is happening. We're going to start with fixed units, where units are fixed. Now you realize the work column has zero hours because nobody has been assigned to any task as yet. So let's assign some tasks. We're using the resource names and I'm going to assign Jane Brown. Look at what happens. Jane is working 100%. 100% is eight hours. Eight by five is 40 hours for Jane. If I assign someone, so I am assigning John Smith, the hours goes up. I'm assigning Ted Baxter, the hours goes up. So each person, so I'm looking to see what has happened. So I'm going into view and task usage. And what has happened is MS project, because it's not effort driven, has given each person their 40 hours of work. 
So let's change fixed units effort driven. And we're going to click OK. One of the things we're going to do is remove all the assigned resources. You just unclick them. So now it's effort driven. We are going to assign. I'm going to assign Jane. So it's 40 hours. I'm going to assign John. It's still 40 hours, but what is significant is duration has reduced because it's been assumed that if you're adding resources, it's because you want to reduce duration. And when I assign 10, duration has reduced, the work has remained the same. So let's go into views and task usage to see what has happened. Everybody has gotten a portion of the 40 hours. All right. And we're going to go to fixed duration. Fixed duration, the duration is supposed to remain the same. Duration, resources. So if I add Jane, it's 24, 8 by 3. If I add John, it's 48 because each is getting 24. And if I add 10, it's now 72. So let's go back into task usage and we will see what has happened. Each person got 24 making it 72 hours so let's go back into the gun shot and i'm going to change the fixed duration advance and i'm going to make it effort driven again now before we realize it was 72 hours and the duration had remained fixed at three days now i have made the fixed duration effort driven so now as i add jane it's now 24 8 by 3 as i add john it's still 24 and as i add text 10 it's still 24 so let's go back into task usage and see what has happened each person got eight hours so the, the, the 24 was divided up among them let us look at fixed work we are going in fixed work is effort driven is graded out work automatically is reduced as you add resources. So let us add Jane. And you realize it goes eight by five is 40. If we add someone else, we add John, it's still eight by, it's still 40, but these have been reduced because it's assumed that as you add more and more resources, the, the duration removes reduces so it reduces from 5 to 2.5 let us look at the task view task usage view and we realize that we have two resources each of them getting 20 hours of work and duration has changed from 5 to 2.5 to reduce hours you should do it before you add any resources all right, you know, in any given day, they're not working eight hours. It doesn't make sense paying them eight hours. You may tell them, come in at 10 o'clock because we're waiting on transportation um, materials to be dropped or whatever. So you reduce the hours. So let's see what happens. I have assigned Jane. Look at what has happened. Jane is normally 100%, but because we have reduced the hours, she is going to be assigned to the project for 75%. Let us look at task usage. All right, so she is going to be assigned. Let us go across here. And you realize that the assignment is not eight hours, but six hours per day. So let us see what happens if we continue to add resources to this fixed work activity task. We're going to add John. And you realize what is happening is days is being reduced, but the hours is remaining constant. So when we go into task usage, we are going to see that the time, the 30 hours, is spread between John and Jane and John. Now we could change the hours manually, 15, 15 each or something like that. All right? If you like my content, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe.